Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say with shouts of hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling bright and blessed this morning. Today is September the 10th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken from Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, which reads, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a process, friends, and one that we have to diligently work at. You see, this isn't a one-time blessing that we are forever free from. We are constantly alert at what's going on in our minds, what's entering our minds, and we are transforming that through the power of the Holy Spirit who enables us to do such things, to keep our minds upon the things of God and not upon the things of the flesh. Now in James chapter 1 and beginning at verse 13, it tells us, let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Now when it says the word tempt here, it's talking about trials of sin that come from within. We're born with this type of sin. All you have to do is observe any young child and you'll see the natural tendencies to do what they want to do instead of what they're supposed to do or what God would have them to do. Even though at an early young age, one and two years old, they might not understand what that is, you see disobedience in their life, rebellion in their life, and that comes from within. And that's what James, Jesus' brother, is telling us here. Let no man say that when he is tempted from within, I'm tempted of God. Because this is a result of the first fall of man, Adam and Eve, all the way back in the garden. So we're not tempted of God because God cannot tempt any man with evil. God doesn't put evil within the heart of men. Neither does he tempt any man. But look at verse 14. Every man is tempted from within when he is drawn away of his own lust, his own craving, his own desire, and he is enticed or baited by that desire. Now that desire, as we know, starts in the mind, works to the heart, and then performs through the hands. And so if we catch it at a very early stage in the mind, it will never move into the heart and certainly will never become evidenced by actions from the body. Take, for instance, what Jesus said. Jesus said, you have heard in old times that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I'm telling you, if you think it in your heart, you're guilty of it. Why? Because it starts as a thought in the mind, it moves to the heart, and we begin to ponder it. We begin to devise a plan on how to carry it out, and then it moves to the hands and becomes an actual physical action. And that's what the Bible is telling us here, that we need to be very careful in guarding our minds. Now, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, it says, The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They're not knives and swords and sticks, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations, which come from the mind, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, knowledge comes from the mind, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Thoughts come from the mind. And so we have to be alert and on guard with what is entering our mind, even to the capability of physically saying no and resisting it so strongly that we will not allow ourselves to contemplate it, to think on it, to allow it any time to move into the heart. Now, this includes attitudes, those that would be of anger and jealousy and bitterness and envy and, and the like. 
This would include sexual thoughts that enter into our minds, sometimes even perverted thoughts. You see, we can't guard against what pops in, but we can certainly pop it out. And it does, I'll agree with you, friends, it takes great effort sometimes to get our mind on other things, to resist that thought. But we are being commanded by Scripture to do that very thing. Cast it down. Take it prisoner. Do not allow it an opportunity to survive, to breathe, to fester, to grow. And so it is through prayer, through pondering and meditating on the Word of God, through thinking on things that are just, kind, holy, pure, good, and righteous that we are able to keep our minds pure and clean before God and not allow ourselves to think on such things that would corrupt us, that cause us harm, that stagnate our Christian growth. Now, I know, friends, that we've talked about this in the past, but sometimes a reminder is good, and I felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me to say these things because somebody out there in video world needs this word. So be on guard. Be alert what is entering your mind. And think on things above, as we are told in Colossians chapter 3, rather than things that are below. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that this word has challenged you and blessed you. I pray that it will keep you sound in the Lord Jesus. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I do love you, and I'll see you on the next video.